rush from our studio is about uh 12 minutes uh no not 12 now uh actually seven minutes pursuing the 7 p.m mark this is the evening rush 90.3 voice of the people fm this is where nigeria's finest conversation takes place and we do this every evening and yes uh today on the hot topic i'll let you in on what we have on the hot topic and i'll tell you the guests that we'll be having on the hot topic party this evening <music> topic this evening nnpc gmd quietly quietly awards control of nigeria's pipeline to northern oil cabal hey, hey. it's not me that wrote it too it's in the paper yeah you can go and read it and then another headline here fg says tinubu sincere to nigerians despite lying about csu certificate and then we'll move to another conversation here election tribunal abia uh, tribunal dismisses PDP's petition against Alex Oti, the governor of Abia State. And on the hot to topic party this evening, on the hot topic party this evening, we'll be having a US based journalist who is actually an ex student of CSU, that is Chicago State University. He'll be giving us an insight on this whole thing about third parties or third party vendors issuing certificates let's know if it's a thing if it's a thing how much of a thing is it and how do we really go about that thing that it is that's our conversation this evening people let's take a quick break we'll be right back to bring you details of these and other conversations this is 90.3 voice of the people fm stay with us we'll be right back are you looking for the perfect getaway? Look no further than the luxurious accommodations at Airport Golden Tulip Hotel, Lagos. Number 42, Murutala Muhammad International Airport, Ooh, Lagos. Relax and unwind in a beautifully appointed room featuring all the amenities you need for a comfortable stay. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, our attentive staff is here to ensure that your everyday need is met. We also offer complimentary pickup and drop off from the Lagos Airport. Take advantage of our stay of the art fitness center outdoor pool and enjoy a delicious meal at our on-site restaurant with stunning views world-class service and a prime location airport golden tulip hotel lagos is the perfect choice for your next vacation or business trip so why wait book your stay today and experience automating comfort and luxury at airport golden tulip hotel for bookings and reservations please call 815 800 Zero three 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 or zero eight one five seven zero zero three 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 three. You can visit our website at airport coding tulip hotel dot com. Airport coding tulip hotel. <laughs> Where well, luxury meets comfort. Listen to hot critical analysis and top trending topics of the day. Join Precious, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. On The Evening Rush. We have been serving you hot and fresh content on radio and you have been loving it. Now we're taking it further. Mm. Catch us live on YouTube at BOP TV for all the juicy content you can't resist. Talk shows, exclusive interviews, news, lifestyle, and more. It's all about you. BOP TV, show up, speak up. Are you aware that Iruka Online Limited installed and designed a 100,000 capacity church building? Oh yeah, we are the sole distributors of global leading brands all over the world, such as Wafte Light Array, speakers and digital amplifiers, Presenos digital mixers and studio equipment, Coswell workstations and keyboards, Fender guitars, Mapex drums, Ashdown bass combos, just to mention but a few. We offer flexible payment plan handled by our financial department with 20 24 7 customer care support system. You can visit our website on www.iruka.com to avoid buying fake products. You can also visit our showroom at number 36, Lagos International Airport Road, beside Golden Tulip Hotel. Iruka, never set to for less. <laughs> The award-winning pizza in the U.S. is now here in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 
<laughs> Romeo, the pizza champions, and Coldberry ice cream delight in every scope. Visit any of our outlets and feel the rich taste from the pizza champions and Coldberry ice cream at 11 Road by First Avenue, Festac Town, 28 at Denira Ogusanya Street, Surulere, 13 at Marilty Way, Lucky Face One, Romeo's Pizza, and Coldberry ice cream. Romeo, the pizza champions. <laughs> Welcome back. This is 90.3 Voice of the People of Femme's Evening Rush. From our studio, it's exactly 7 p.m. And um, let me run you through some conversations that are um, hot and trending just before we go straight to our guest who is standing by and waiting already. So I did tell you, or I did share with you that on the hot topic this evening, there is this news of NNPC GMD quietly awarding control of Nigeria's pipeline to Northern Oil Cabals. Uh, we'll look at that but let's go straight to the um election petition tribunal or election petition court in abia state as the governorship election petitions tribunal sitting in omaha on friday today struck out the petition filed by the pdp candidate okechuku ahaiwe challenging the election of governor alex oti of the labor party the three-member panel in its almost four-hour judgment read by justice J G T D guada dismiss the three grounds raised by the petitioner for lacking in merit. In a unanimous decision, the tribunal held that the petitioners failed to convince the panel that the election was mad by irregularities and not conducted in substantial compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 beyond reasonable doubt. I'm just smiling reading that because um, we did all know what happened or played out in the ele you know, ele election in Abia State especially and how Abia State, you know, collision of results was very dramatic. So seeing this play out in the tribunal is just very interesting to read, right? So um, it further ruled that the issue of whether Mr. Alex Oti was qualified to contest or whether the LP's governorship primary was not duly conducted were entirely party affairs and therefore the tribunal lacked the jurisdiction. So they said, so the tribunal also held that the petitioners could not prove beyond reasonable doubts, that is, via allegations that Mr. Oti did not score the majority of the lawful votes cast and that corrupt practices and irregularities marred the election. Now the judgment was delivered at a very at a federal high court room amidst the heavy presence of security personnel and as reported by news agency of nigeria and interesting i like you to chiming on it if you'd like to jump on that conversation but let's move to another story very quickly as 
The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idri, says President Bola Tinubu was sincere to Nigerians in alleviating the hardship being faced in the country. I'm wondering why the use of words and not is, because, I mean, we're still going through hard times, right? So, you should, I mean, we still live in the present sense of the hard times. All right, just thinking out. So, Mr. Idris, uh, Minister for Information, made this comment at a business launch against uh, organized for him and other ministers by the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, NPAN, on Thursday yesterday in Abuja. Drawing references from the recent negotiation with the Labour Union, the minister stated or said that the, govern, uh, the government, the government delegation had to get back to the present when Labour Unions were adamant that the least they will take is 40,000 Naira for minimum wage. Ah, so they had to, you know, get back to, you know, uh -uh, why are you guys going to do us that way, right? Okay. So I'm um, stating that further. Uh, yes. So it did say, um, um, we went back to him and after analytical discussion, the federal government felt it was comfortable with 35,000 naira. So uh, let me take that again. It says, after back and forth for about two hours, and because we went to the truthful, uh, because... We want to be to be truthful to Nigerians. To be truthful, actually, I think there's an error. We decided that some of us should go back and discuss with the president before we continue negotiation. We went back to him, and after analytical discussion, the federal government felt it was comfortable with 35,000 naira. President Sinubu said, if we can pay, please, we should pay. But if we know that we cannot pay, we should not go and make a promise that we cannot fulfill. Yeah. That's quite honest. This shows that the president is very sincere about his intention to make this wage increment to labor and the Nigerian workers a reality. Our colleagues, um, uh, he said, as colleagues, I urge you to report it the way it is. When you are not clear, ask questions. I will be here to explain and clarify. So he said a lot. You know, bottom line is that the president is very sincere or was in his terms now sincere to Nigerians when he said he was going to alleviate, you know, their sufferings in spite, according to this paper report, lying about or despite lying about the CSU certificate. Well, we'll move to the NNPC issue right now. As Mele Kiari, managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC Limited, has still fully the word used by the People's Gazette new newspaper, still silly, awarded juicy re rehabilitation contracts of the nation's pipeline to four oil companies that include two downstream retailers, a move that is tantamount to handing the retailers control of the pipelines at the risk of exploiting other retail outlets and Nigerians at large. This Paper report says. Now it says Oil Serve Limited, AA Rano Nigeria Limited, Macready Oil and Gas Service Company Limited, and MRS Oil Nigeria PLC, where the four companies awarded the lucrative contracts of maintaining the country's pipelines to fast track the flow of crude oil to refineries and transport its byproducts back to the country. Now, speculations are rife that. Northern Kebal is still in charge of the nation's petroleum sector. Despite Muhammad Buhari's nepotistic presidency having ended since May, according to these reports, because AA Rano Nigeria Limited and MRS Oil Nigeria PLC, two retail businesses owned by two northerners, Awalu Rano and Sayew Dantata, respectively, you can go and check and verify for yourself. They got the highly coveted contracts does it mean that there are nobody or no uh, you know um downstream business owners in other parts from other parts of the country that should have been awarded the contract or that are qualified enough that's actually what this paper is saying so it says the nnpc gmd has frequently given the two aforementioned businesses which are mostly merchants of petroleum products pre or preferential treatment and it says, one such instance was in 2021 when they were both selected for the crude for fuel swap. You remember now, the 
direct sale, direct purchase swap thing now. Mm-hmm. The crude for sale swap. Mm-hmm. So he said they were both selected for the crude for sale swap contract to cater to the nation's motor and jet uh, jet fuel needs as um, the um, jet A fuel, the aviation fuel. Right. So, but the latest pipeline contract awarded to the two companies are validating speculations that the Northern Cabal is still very much active even after Mr. Buhari's exit. Now, the contracts were issued on LOT basis with MRS Oil securing the juiciest LOT for that oversees depots in Southwest comprising Musimi or a product pipeline 151.3 kilometer Ibadan depot, Iloring depot, Ibadan Iloring product pipeline um, 168.9 kilometer um, Atlas Cov uh, Mosimi. In fact, we plenty. Let me not even bore you. But the report just goes on and on and on. That's it, Lagos. All right. So phone lines are now open. Let's take your thoughts and your reactions on these conversations while we await our guest. 0700-903-903-903. 0700-903-903-9. These are the numbers to call. Let's take a quick breather. We'll be right back to uh, begin to take your thoughts and reactions. Remember that the WhatsApp number is 0700-903-9039. You can call that number on WhatsApp if you are joining us from the diaspora. But if you are... Uh, you can also do a WhatsApp message to that number, by the way, if you're in Nigeria and whatever you're in the diaspora. But then, if you're joining us live and you want to call us direct, it's 0700 903 903 903 0700 903 903 903. I take a quick breath, I'll be right back. Legal stimulus in pizza lovers because something big is happening in Ajao Estates, Lagos. Are you ready for a slice of heaven? Get ready to indulge your taste buds like never before. That's right, folks. Romeo Pizza is opening a sizzling new outlet at 22 Latif Salami Street, Ajao Estate, right next to the famous Global Supermarket. Mark your calendars today for the grand opening this Friday on October the 6th. It's going to be a pizza party like no other. Picture this. Just picture this. Mouth-watering cheesy slices freshly baked in our ovens just waiting for you to take a bite and that's not all we've got special deals giveaways and surprises lined up to make your visit unforgettable join us at romeo pizza on october 6th at 22 latif salami street ajao estate for the pizza event of the year don't miss out on the flavor explosion romeo pizza the secret is in the sauce stay tuned for more updates and we'll see you there Tune in, pizza lovers, because something big is happening in Ajao Estate, Lagos. The Evening Rush with Pressures. Let me bring you a reminder of hot topical conversations of the day. Critical analysis of hot and trending topics on politics, economy, lifestyle, human angle, and sometimes the unusual. Featuring sound and informed guests across various sectors to discuss matters arising on hot topic Bali. Intense conversations, critical analysis. We sometimes disagree to agree. Join Precious every weekday from Monday to Friday on the Evening Rush. 7 to 9 p.m. 90.3, Voice of the People FM, Lagos. Don't miss it.
right, Lagos, you are welcome back from Wines as you open uh, for us to try for you to chime in on the conversation. Yes, I did tell you that the number to call direct line is 0700 903 903 903. And um, the WhatsApp line is 0700 903 903 These are the numbers to call. Let's uh, begin to take your thoughts and your conversation on the topic. Uh, so um, I have quite a number of WhatsApp messages. Let me quickly run through them and then I get to join my guest immediately. Uh, so this is in a country that works. Uh, the president would have honorably resigned. Uh, will he ever talk where others would? Um, leaders are talking. You know, you said a lot. Thank you. I appreciate you. Noble man. Emmanuel Ufegbu says, the man must not benefit from... Hmm. You people not kill me with this your messages. You know you're not kill me, right? Okay. So um I have joining me over um you know virtual virtually joining me virtually is um a United States based award winning journalist and he's also an ex student of the Chicago State University, um J. Coiden Palma. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me, for joining me, right? I say having me. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. So, you know, it was, I, I want to say this is a bit miraculous because it wasn't planned, you know, but I'm glad that we eventually made it happen, right? Of course. Uh, you know, some of the best things in life happen organically, so. Thank you. Awesome. So um, I'm really very excited that you did join us in this conversation, especially because I'd like you to, you know, give us a bit of insight on how things happen in your alma mater. Right. So let's let's first of all, let you give us a background of what your school, you know, the overall administration of Chicago State University is like. So uh, just to, you know, give your listeners a background about me, um, I attended Chicago State University yes. in the late 90s. I worked as the editor of the school newspaper for three years. Oh, yeah. And That's so, a tempo, right? Yes, that is tempo. Yes, the please. university newspaper, which the mm -hmm. university uh, shut down a few years ago. So one thing that your viewers and listeners all need to understand is that the university itself does not have a student newspaper. Mm. And that is one of the biggest problems right there, that mm -hmm. there is nobody to hold that administration accountable. But Temple was campus. but Temple was a university based newspaper at the time you were there? Yes. Okay. Yes. We had a newspaper. It, okay. it, the newspaper was around for fifty years. Oh wow. And then the university shut it down um in recent years. Um, and there's been so much that's gone on in Chicago State in the last ten to fifteen years. So it actually does not surprise me that they are in the middle of this international incident um, hmm. because of the dysfunction that happens at that university. And it starts at the highest level, being the office of the president of the university, down to the members of the board of trustees who are appointed by the governor of Illinois. Um, so that this situation, this sad situation that we're currently talking about is occurring is not a shock to me at all. Are you are you subtly are you subtly accusing the management of the university of some complexity in one way or the other? I mean, it sounded some somehow like that. Is that what you're saying? That am, they're not totally they cannot be totally exonerated from the things that happen in the school. Is that what you're saying? I am absolutely saying that. Oh, wow. I would not I would not be surprised if as this as we keep learning more information about this, that there are people inside that university that were um, conspirators in this whole thing. That would not shock me at all. We, we, don't, we cannot prove that yet, but that would not surprise me. And, and I say that because you have to understand the history of Chicago State. You have to realize that Chicago State has had a former president that was, federal, uh, of, that was federally convicted of crimes. Hmm. They had a financial aid director that was federally convicted of crimes. And these people went to prison. Um, hmm. This, this is not a surprise to me that they're in the middle of this mess. Not at all, Precious. Oh, wow. All right. Interesting. So um, when it comes to the administration of the school proper, how, how you know, what, what kind of due diligence would you say the school actually does, um, you know, in background checks of the academic records that are submitted by students um, prior to admission into the school or for admission into the school? So I would say that um, in terms of what we're talking about, in terms of with, with the Nigerian president, we also have to put it in the context of that this happened back in the 1970s. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so absolutely, you know, now today the technology 
has definitely changed. Yes. Um, back in the 70s, there's no telling what they were doing. I, I, I doubt they verified probably anything back in the 70s. So that is why I'm saying I could definitely understand how this situation got to where it is today because we're talking about an institution back in the 70s that was doing things that were probably crazy back then. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the fact that um, the things that came out in the deposition and just some of the con contradictory statements that we heard from the deposition, that, that's par for the course at Chicago State. I've covered this university for over 20 years and they talk out of both sides of their mouth all the time all the time it is very difficult to get information out of this university oh, wow we so, so you're saying that university management hasn't been quite honest with students and straightforward in your dealings is that what you're no. saying ne oh never have been oh, never wow. have been oh wow no and, and and i'm not just saying that you can ask any chicago state alum and they'll tell you the exact same thing so, you know, one of the things I find is funny, Precious, is that people in Nigeria have been asking me, well, you know, how do you feel about all this bad press that's now coming down on the university you attended? And I was like, I'm absolutely happy. I'm absolutely happy because it's now shining a spotlight on Chicago State on an international level, which means now they got to get their acts together or they're going to be heads rolling. And I would not be surprised if the governor of Illinois, as this thing keeps going on, the governor, J.B. Pritzker, if he absolutely steps in and we start seeing board of trustee members resigning or being removed, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the president eventually taking a downfall for this. There's a lot more to this story. And what I'll say is that it's because of the culture of Chicago State and the culture of dysfunction and the history of corruption that they've had within their administration. None of this is shocking to me. It's shocking to you, it's shocking to people in Nigeria. This is not shocking to journalists in the city of Chicago because we have covered this university for decades, decades. So none of this surprises me. Oh my goodness. All right. So um, you've said quite a lot and I'm trying to take, to, to take most of the things that you've said <laughs> in. Um, so that, it's it's interesting to know that you know there's been that suspicion about the school and you know some sort of dealings that aren't straightforward but what have you know our students been doing um in trying to um hold the university responsible to uphold at least truth that's an excellent question i'm glad you asked that thank you for asking that precious thank you chicago state university when i was a student there in the late 90s, we had a student population, I'd say probably 8,000 uh, students. The current student population in Chicago State is maybe 1,000, maybe. And this is because of what has been happening over all these years. Their enrollment has just plummeted. It's gotten to the point where a few years ago, they were actually considering closing the university. Um, the university is also financially strapped. And so when you have a, a institution like that, that is financially strapped because it's being underfunded by the government, being underfunded by the state of Illinois, um, it makes them susceptible to a many of the um, things that have been happening in the last few years. And so I'll, I'll just tell you as of recently, um, three weeks ago, Three weeks ago, Precious, before this whole thing mm -hmm. with the Nigerian president started hitting the news, there was a story run in the Chicago Sun-Times, which is a major newspaper here in Chicago, and it questioned why the president of this university, President Scott, received a $50,000 bonus that was given to her by the Board of Trustees when the enrollment numbers are dropping, the test scores are dropping, the graduation rates are dropping, and she's been getting a bonus every year since she's been there. She's been there at least oh, wow. six or seven years. So again, there is so much about this. Um, the professors at Chicago State University were on strike like six months ago. Back in the spring, they were on strike, literally walked out. They were out on strike for a week, asking for better pay, asking for better benefits. And all this is going on is the student population is dropping and this board of trustees thought it was a good idea to give the president of this university a bonus. And 
the news media in Chicago <laughs> reported it. So I, I'm telling you all this stuff, and this is why I really want to come on your show, Precious. And I've got a lot of inquiries for me to come on shows in Nigeria, but I took my time. I really liked what you talked about on your YouTube channel, on your platform. And I said, no, I want to talk to her first because she's going to get an understanding of where I'm coming from with this. And, and the really sad part about this is that the education you get at Chicago State University, I'd put it up against anybody. My professors were top notch. However, the administration is trash. They are complete trash. They always have been. And this is not a surprise that we find ourselves here on October the 6th, 2023, talking about this and asking questions about was Chicago State complicit in what has happened. It is an investigation that is going to be ongoing. I am happy that this is an international story. I'm hoping that even more journalists start digging into this because we're going to find out a whole lot about this university and how this whole thing went down. None of this is a surprise to me. Whoa, interesting. All right, so um, you know, back here in Nigeria, uh, you cannot actually graduate from a Nigerian university at least mm -hmm. at recent time without at least I think within your third or final year, uh, without the school doing a background check of your required documents. So they get to check mm -hmm. through your basic required documents. For instance, what we call why they get to verify your YEG, they get to you know make other verifications. If your YEG is not verifiable, they will deny your graduation. So uh, do you think Chicago State University, you know, applies such due diligence in the issuance of certification? I, I, I would say that the university probably does. Um, I, I would say that the university definitely does. I mean, they definitely put me through a bunch of stuff when I was trying to, mm. <laughs> to graduate. You know, they, oh, no, you still need this class. So mm. I, I think they do do their due diligence, but I think it's like anything else. It, all you need is one person on the inside who's real willing to grease the wheels for somebody. So, you know, that, that could be definitely a possibility of what we're talking about here. It only takes one person who, you know, decides, oh, okay, I'm gonna take care of this person for this to happen. What what I will say is that there there is there are structures in place in Chicago State. There are protocols in place in Chicago State. The problem is, were those protocols followed? Follow. And that is where this story is really going. Did people follow the proper protocols is everything on the up and up and i think you have a lot of officials who are very nervous right now because and so i i want to say this to you precious think about it for a second if you're a university it doesn't matter if you're an american university or any university hmm. but if you're a university and one of your graduates goes on to become the president of a nation a nation that has over 200 million people don't you think you will be promoting that as your university? Absolutely. His pictures will be everywhere for promotionals for the university to pride exactly. on it, to pride on it that, I mean, our, 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 our ex students is XYZ and that's a big deal. And Chicago State hasn't done that. So why do you think they the, haven't the, done the, I don't know. Why do you think they haven't done it? I don't know. <laughs> You're there, there so you, you, can, you can tell better. So I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a good question. It's a question that everyone needs to be asking. Why, why did this university not promote the fact that one of their alums just became the president of one of the largest countries on the continent of Africa with 200 million people? I the, would be promoting that the, like the, crazy. The largest, the biggest African country. In, I mean, that's it. And, you have and a country with the biggest president. black population, by the way. So we, we can go on yes. and on. So, and, and, and let's be honest, the Nigerian American population is arguably the best educated population in the United States. People from Nigeria who've come over here to immigrate, come over here, they go to fine institutions. Absolutely. They, uh, those who stay here, they get great jobs. I would be promoting that like crazy if I'm Chicago State, but they didn't do it. So what is that? What is that telling you? What type of questions does that mean that you should have for the university? I think everyone here kind of understands what possibly happened. We just can't prove it yet. And when we can prove it, this is going to be one of the biggest stories in a very long time. And again, um, I'm very happy that it's starting to get the international attention that it deserves. I, um, because I know over in Nigeria, you all want to know 
um, who you have as a president. There are questions about his identity. There are questions about um, how he has done some of the things he did. And I'm telling you, here in Chicago, we have questions on what Chicago State University has done. And we've had these questions for a number of years. And this particular time, they may have gotten themselves in a situation that they're not going to be able to get out of unscathed. So I, I'm going to stay on this story. There are a lot of journalists who are now also looking into this. And there's so many different facets to look into this. And the, and the news is starting to come out little by little. But this is a huge story. Um, and I just came on your show because I want people in Nigeria to understand um, if they've never been to the United States or they're not familiar with the United States, just some of the differences we have with our universities. I know there's questions about why his middle initial was not used mm -hmm. um, here in American, you know, here in American universities, they identify you by your social security number. Oh, so, so, your, name, so, so your name doesn't really matter. It, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it, they really are identifying you by the number. For example, when I was a student in Chicago State, when the professors would take attendance to see who was there that day, they do it back then by your social security number. Mm -hmm. Now, because we're in 2023 and identity theft is such a big thing, they've now adjusted that. So they give students a, a, an identification number for the school. Okay. And they use that number. Okay. But back in the day, it was done by your social security number. And I was there in the 90s. So I'm pretty sure back in the 70s, when President Bola was there, they would definitely use the social security numbers. And that is why this whole mm -hmm. thing of the social mm -hmm. security, security number, number belonging to someone else and was, exactly that, that we know belong to a female. That is why that is such a big thing here. It's not by the names here. It's by the social security number. And that's what I would so, so in your opinion, what do you think would have played out if the school had accepted? Now, in, during the deposition, our deposition, um, the registrar sure. had mentioned that, you know, um, the that they are setting in some way that, you know, the president of Nigeria is the person whom um, they can testified that you know went to their school even though they haven't met him before right but how were they able to tell that the same person is the person who shares that same social security number and how in what ways do you think or what's the reason why they probably didn't do their due diligence to see the discrepancies or is it just a pure negligence or perhaps you know it just skipped their mind so I, i'm going to say again um it could be all of the above that you just said but I also think we also have to understand he was there in the late 1970s. Yes. And they did things so differently back then um, that, you know, we have to keep that part of the context as we look at this. Um, I think the answer is they may not be able to tell you how they can verify it because it was back in 1977. The people who were there at the time are no longer there. Those professors weren't there. Those administrators aren't there. I don't think they know what procedures they were actually following or not following. So, you know, I just think um, a lot of this is, um, unfortunately, time is going to hurt a lot of it. But there are still a lot of things that we should be questioning Chicago State about. Um, I have a story that I will be running within the next 24 hours mm. that talks about the university archives mm. um, and the university archives, I will give you a preview and just tell you the basis of my story. All right. The right. archives, the archives are in complete shambles. Oh, wow. And when I say in complete shambles, I mean, I was on the campus two days ago and looking for past tempo newspapers, the school newspapers, which tell the history of your school. Mm -hmm. And there were literally only 40 copies that I could find. And this newspaper has been around for 50 years. And when I asked the archivist, you know, where are the rest of them, he didn't know because he just been hired two months ago. Chicago State University went two years of not having a university archivist. The, the archives were closed. Now, part of that was due to COVID, but also because the university is so underfunded and understaffed, they don't have people. So what I'm telling you is that for the last two years, no one could get into the university archives. So I don't know what happened to newspapers. The uh, yearbook in which President Bola uh, graduated in 1979. Absolutely, that disappeared, by the way. 
it is missing from the archives. I yes. can physically confirm that because I was there. Oh, wow. It's not there. You tried to source it, but so you couldn't get through. Couldn't get there. It wasn't there. Years yeah. up to that period were there. Years after that were there. The year everyone is looking for wasn't He's not there. there. <laughs> so what is that a coincidence? So let, let me break this let, let, let me break this down for my Nigerian people. So you're <laughs> saying that you're saying that um the graduation um documents of for nineteen for for graduation students of nineteen seventy-nine is uh, mysteriously disappeared from the archive of the Chicago State University. But the ones I'm for saying, preceding years and years after it and all that are still there. So what I'm saying is the yearbook. The yearbook, the yearbook um, that's what I'm saying. That's yes, a grad yes, The yearbook yes. is like the graduation book for that year. Basically, that's, that's what we know yes. it as. So I just needed to break it down for my people to understand. Sure, sure, so that yes, yearbook yes. is missing, but the years that followed and the ones before it are still there. Are still there. That particular I, I, year disappeared. That year is gone. I actually have a photo of it. <laughs> I have a photo of it. Literally, you see 1976, 1977. Whoops, there's a gap. 1980, 1981. Oh, wow. Interesting. It so hasn't been, It hasn't been checked out because the archives have been closed, so... All right. So um, I'd like you to help us clarify the issue of third vendors issuing certificates and all that. But before we get to that clarification... Okay. Um, Back here in Nigeria, for instance, if, um, you know, uh, the the results that you submitted to the school to gain entrance to the school is questionable, even years after admission or even years after graduation, your graduation and your papers can be denied and can be retracted. Yeah. Is that a thing in Chicago State University? Um, I cannot speak 100 percent to that. I would think that they could revoke your degree. Because, you because those were basic requirements that you failed to meet. Correct. So th those are basic things that you, you, you basically entered the university on false pretenses. So you would think the university could have the power to revoke your degree, your academic records. I cannot speak for it 100% sure, but more than likely they do have that protocol in place. That is something I would have to... Uh, uh, get clarification on from the university spokesperson, but trying to reach a university spokesperson at Chicago State University is not easy. Oh, wow, really? Why okay? so? No, no. It's just, it, again, Precious, you have to understand this is how this university works. For example, I you can call, I can give you the number right now to call the main switchboard at that university. I did it the other day. Their operating hours are from like 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I called at 2 o'clock afternoon. It called me. I called it. It sent me to a voicemail and then told me the voicemail box was full and hung up on me. Oh, wow. And that's calling the main switchboard of the university. So, you know, trying to reach a particular person can be even more daunting. And, um, you know, this university has been, um, the Illinois Attorney General has uh, looked into this university for violating the FOIA Act, and I can explain what that is for you. Um, so here in the United States, we have a law called the Freedom of Information Act. Yes. Okay. So that means any citizen, journalist, whoever they wants to be, they can request certain documents from our public institutions. Yes, Chicago please. State University is a public institution. So you can put in a request and say, hey, I'd like to know how much money the president makes and how much the basketball coach makes. And they are required by law to acknowledge your uh, application within five days and then get back to you within another five days. Well, Chicago State has routinely violated this law and just will not respond to requests. Or if they do, they, they do it two months later to the point where the Illinois Attorney General's office has on numerous occasions had to reach out to the university and say, hey, you need to supply these documents when people request them and you need to do them in an expedited manner. This is just- And, and there is no penalty? And, and there is no penalty for defaulting? Uh, uh, well, yes, there is a penalty if they default, but it's also up to uh, the state if they choose to enforce the penalty. So the state has been reluctant, you're saying? Because they can't, can't be unaware that. all this while. 
because can, can, they have they have various ways they can do it. They can give them an oral warning. They can give them a written warning. They can fine them. They have can, they been doing know, that? I'm not sure. You would have to ask the Illinois Attorney General's office. Oh, wow. So the state is also part of the, all of this. So, so get great. Fine. So um, there's been, you know, um, some of this confusion or statement about Chicago State University having you know, third party vendors um, who can issue ceremonial replacement certificates for students, sure. right? I'd like you to, you know, help us clear that scenario. Let's understand exactly how that works. If it's actually a thing and then how it works. So this is not exclusive to Chicago State. Many universities in the United States do this. So they're mm. third party vendors. Um, and basically what happens if if you need a replacement from a diploma, let's say you lost yours in a flood mm. in your house or whatever, mm. and you want a replacement, you would contact your university, um, apply to it, and then the university sends the information to an outside third party vendor who would then be responsible for sending you the actual diploma itself. Now, I put on a, a story that I also sent to you. Um, because that was the second article I wrote about in that all the president of Nigeria had to do in this situation was apply online that he needed his diploma from Chicago State University. He could have went to the school website. You just click on it. And for eight dollars, eight American dollars, eight, mm. eight. Oh, so everybody understands what I'm saying. Eight dollars. He could have applied. They would have uh, accepted the money. Uh, accepted his application and he could have had a diploma, a replacement diploma or certificate mailed to him within eight to 10 weeks. And that is on the Chicago State University website, that process. That is how easy it would have been Absolutely. for him to get a diploma. So so I want you to clear this issue for us. You know, um, because of the discrepancies in the certificate uh, that is submitted to our INEC, our electoral body, and the um, you know prototypes that the school had shown during the um, you know deposition and the process. We like to really understand how this works in with the vendors. Do these vendors have the right to perhaps get signatories for those reissuance of certificates without the school's authorization? And if they do, how possible is it? that they can get the wrong, um, for instance, president and registrar or whoever should have been signatory at the year of graduation and use someone else entirely. I like to understand how that scenario should have worked or does work, you know, officially. So I think we're talking about two different scenarios. Um, it appears as though what President Bola used was not necessarily an authorized vendor of Chicago State. Not that necessarily, but could, could be. Now. You know, when you say necessarily, you, you make you make it sound like it could be. So I'd like you to be strict to the point. Sure. So it could be okay. or it couldn't be. That okay. is something we've reached out to the university about okay. to find out who is their actual vendor. Okay. But as I just explained, it take they get up to about a week in order to respond to our requests okay so to find out which vendor they use compared to which vendor he used that information will probably come forth within about a week or so because people are asking that question all right awesome so now how possible is it that a vendor certified by the school would issue a certificate to a student with a wrong you know uh, signatories or with the wrong set of signatories and the school hasn't reacted to that to say, I mean, the, the school doesn't sanction the vendor to say, you know, sanction them for representing them poorly. So I would say that first, the, the university would have to know that that is something that occurred. It would have to be brought to their attention. Um, and I'm pretty sure if it was brought to their attention, they would take measures like canceling the contract with that particular vendor if they found out about that. But in this case, we don't know what Chicago State University knew and what they didn't know. The only thing we know is what they said during the deposition, which was, we don't know where that diploma came from. They did not- Can you repeat that again? Sorry, more. sorry, can you repeat that again? So you said at the deposition, the Chicago State Registrar said they don't know where the diploma came from. 
They cannot confirm the authenticity of that diploma is what they say. That means they, they probably don't. That, that means that implies that they don't have a hand in the diploma. That's what it means, right? That is the, the that is what it does imply. Okay. All right, apologies for quoting you. I just wanted I just wanted to understand no, no, that no, that part so, so we can <laughs> so we can move forward. So if they do yes. not know and they cannot confirm the authenticity of the result, then where then lies the fate of the result itself? It's a good question. We shall see. I, I think I oh, think you, you know the thing I, I love about this case is that I think it's bringing up questions that no one has asked before, and. Uh, what we're going to eventually see is that there may be some uh, regulations that have to be put in place here in the United States on some of these companies um, that are being used. It, this may mean that we may need some of our congressional members to take a look at these situations of these third party vendors that are doing this for these universities and see, do they need to be regulated? Do they need to have some rules in place? Because it seems as though right now it's just kind of a free fall. And, you know, what are the penalties if someone does what you just described? Um, I think this is something that we are in the United States are going to have to look at and figure out what we can, can do. Because um, I guarantee you this probably isn't the first situation. Mm where this possibly has happened, but it's the one that's now getting all of the attention. All right. So going back to this whole third party vendor thing, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's because it's really been a thing and a lot of us need clarity so that we understand And I'm asking as a journalist so that I'll have the proper I information need. to give to my audience. Mm -hmm. I need for them sure. to be properly informed and how things sure. work. Right. So um, how possible is it then that um, a third vendor issued a certificate and then the registrar says oh we don't know about it but then the same registrar in another breath, breath, breath did say that oh i know the student and he did graduate from our school I, I like to understand how does that work so if a student did graduate from your school and then wasn't issued a certificate because i do remember that the school did say that there was no evidence of um, even the first issuance of certificate am i correct right even the initial um, issuance of certificate. That is to say that um, he did not request for the first certificate in the first place. Right. So it's not as to say that that certificate was missing or burnt or something and then you had to, you know, go for a reissuance and then you use a third vendor because you didn't uh -huh. even request for it in the first place. Right? Am I correct? So how that I, I works really is, like to understand. <laughs> Let's be yeah, sure that this yeah, is what, yeah. yes. So okay. how that works mm -hmm. as, as having friends who've uh, graduated from Chicago State, if, let's say, if you don't go to the graduation ceremony mm -hmm. or you don't request that they mail the diploma to you, to you, or let's say you complete your classes and then you move to France okay, and they don't have an address to okay. send your diploma to you, okay. then they would keep that diploma in your file. But the school said they don't have record of the diploma in their file too. How possible is it? I, that's why I said earlier, they, they've been talking out of both sides. Exactly. Of so, so if the school, if you are sure uh -huh. that this person graduated from your school and was mm -hmm. never, there is no instance of even issuing the first certificate to this person and then... Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then again, you still insist that this person graduated from your school. How possible is it that you have a transcript of, I mean, from first year to final year, this person actually did attend your school. So why, what could have been the reason why this person did not pick up their certificates? And why did you not issue it yourself? And why can you not ascertain the certificate that the person is carrying? I like to understand how what's going on here. There must be something yes. missing somewhere that, you know, something must be amiss. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and it does seem like that because, you know, again, when when I heard them say in court uh, two weeks ago um, that, well, we don't keep diplomas in our files and then they get to the deposition mm -hmm. and they say, well, in certain situations, we may keep a diploma on file. It's like, well, you didn't say that two weeks ago. So, I again, I, I this is why I say about Chicago State, it's, it's dysfunctional. It doesn't surprise me that they're contradicting themselves 
on in some of their answers. And that is why I am so appreciative that so many media members are now asking questions of this university. And, and if you've noticed, the president of the university hasn't said a word. Absolutely. Yet. Absolutely. Hadn't said nothing. Quiet. We why do you think so her. anyway? Why do you think? My, my initial, what do you think the reason could be? Because they're, they're embarrassed about it. There's something going on they don't want people to know about. Oh, wow. This is your alma mater you're talking about. It is. It is. No doubt. And and got friends, lifelong friends, got some great professors, had a great education while I was there. I was an African, African American studies major. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you want me to say? Yes. But I need, th we need this to happen because Chicago State needs to be sanitized from the top to the bottom. There's no reason we should be talking about something like this because all it's doing is showing the dysfunction of the university, how you cannot trust what they say. Um, you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt. It, it, it is definitely about the reputation of this university. And I can say it as a person who was a former student. I can say it as a person who was a student journalist. And I can say it as a person who's a professional journalist for 20 years who has covered this university. And, you know, has written after scandal, after scandal, after scandal. And all you have to do is look back on our past university presidents and see all the trouble they've gotten into. You know, mm -hmm. we talked about President Elnora Daniel, whose signature is on the forge. Absolutely. Is she still going to sue? I, she, I did hear something about she's suing. Is that still a thing? Um, I've heard that she's going to sue. I have not seen a lawsuit that has been filed. Um, but even Dr. Daniel, she was removed from the school because of some stuff she did with some money regarding $15,000 that was supposed to go to oh. the university that she put somewhere else. Oh, that was wow. the reason why she got removed from the school. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If people just look back into the university and the history of the university and just Google news stories on Chicago, say so you will find just like continuous controversy after controversy scandal after scandal and i was there as a student journalist for you know a couple of them myself so i know what happened I, I i know specifically a lot of the stuff that happened and some of the things that the university tried to cover up and i'll tell you this personal story when i was there as a managing editor along with some of the other editorial editorial board members of the school newspaper there were constant times when the university would call our office and ask us not to run a particular story because they thought it would make the university look bad. And our response to them were, we are journalists, we're student journalists, we have a responsibility to tell the truth. If you don't want something to come out or you want to put a certain spin mm -hmm. on it, that's your public relations department's job. That's not our job. Our job is not to promote the university. Obviously, we want to do stories that do promote the university, but that doesn't mean we have to do that and abandon things when we see as pure problems that are coming up. And I think, as I told you at the beginning of this conversation, that was one of the reasons they made the decision a few years ago to get rid of the university newspaper. And I think uh, your, your listeners have to really think about and ask that question, why would any legitimate American university not want to have a student newspaper or a newspaper of any kind? That, that that really tells you a lot about this university. All right, interesting. I have quite a lot of reactions coming up. Um, let me see if I can take 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 a few reactions and then um, I'll let you respond to them very quickly. You know, you did. We did promise that this was going to be thirty minutes, but I'm sorry, I've eaten up yeah, to no forty sorry. minutes of your time already. Please forgive me. So this message says something about um, um, yeah, throwing some jabs at my station and that were propaganda. And says, how can you forget what you have? He said, does it make that, that? How is it possible that this that the president would have forged what he has? because he's this graduate of the school. But how possible is it that he would have forged the certificate since the school admits that he indeed attended their school? And the person further says, does it make sense to you that someone can forge what they already should have? And he says, CSU swore under an oath that Tinubu attended and graduated, yet you keep claiming he forged his certificate. Why are you losing 
Oh, so I'd like you to respond to that, you know, because sure. you're my guest sure. here and, and you're an alumni of the school, so I'd like you to respond to this. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you look at the document itself that he submitted to the INEC, I, I spotted it right away. Like, that's not accurate. That's not what our diplomas look like. I know what the diplomas look like from the school. I yes, went to. even that's before crazy. the even even before the official documents were out, your uh, article yeah. did actually state that that diploma wasn't uh, correct from the school. So that that again yeah. brings me to the question: How possible is it that a third vendor will issue a certificate without the correct logos, without the correct signatories, you know, with without the essential ingredients? of original diplomas from the school. Is it possible that those third vendors can make such mistakes and the school will look the other way? Perhaps that's the reason why the school denied, you know, authenticating the document. Could that be? Anything anything could be. Anything could be. <laughs> All right. So let me quickly run through some calls. My phone lines are buzzing. <laughs> Hello, good evening to you. Hello. Yes, good evening. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, it's Chukwode. Chukwode from UK. Go ahead. Let's hear you. Yeah. yeah uh, precious. Uh, what, what, a, what, a, what a great guest you have in your, in your studio there. Yeah. So, uh, hello? Hello? Go ahead. I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. I've been able to. Oh. I, I could hear you all along. Just go ahead, please. All right. So you can see what I have been saying about some universities in the Western world. He, he just hit the hammer on the nail. Because there is nothing that stops the president from all these things. The, the disgrace that Nigerians are facing or the Nigeria in general is facing. Because this is something that the person could have one only one click and he will get that thing. Just like the question that you're asking, that the question I put yesterday, that many, even the passport, the Nigerian passport, is not the immigration that are the one doing it. There are some companies that are doing it for them, and a vendor. Let's use that word. But does it does it mean that that vendor does it and immigration is not aware of it? It can be possible. So the question keep going and keep going, keep going and keep going because I told you most of all these universities because of the money that is coming in into them. There are some universities in the Western world I can bet you if if we put our own in order, a Nigerian university might be better than them. But it's because of the corruption. I appreciate and we you. have a terrible corruption over here. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, um, let's take a few more calls. Uh, you can call me directly on the WhatsApp line. I may not be able to take a direct call right now uh, because uh, that phone line is very busy. But let me see if I can read through some messages. Uh, this here says, "Good evening, precious. I know you would not read my message. Regardless, I will still ask why has the interim president." <laughs> Oh, you guys will not even stop. Eh? Why has the president not stopped the GND? I'm, I'm not answering this question. Please. I'm not the president. <laughs> Hello, good evening to you. Hello, good evening. Yes, pressure. good evening. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Mr. Izzy calling from the moment. Mr. Izzy, go ahead, please. Yeah, your guest is a really, in fact, is a very fantastic, fantastic um, someone. So there is this, there's something he said. He said the journalists then in um in the US that if the anything they see is what they put into account. And even if those at the top they try to say, no, don't do this, this is what you do, they go by what they see. Why is it that Nigeria is the other way around? They go by what those at the top tells them to to cover. Why is it like that? Why is journalists different from the one that is in practice outside the country? That's what I want him to answer for me, please. Is he a Nigerian? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jay. Mr. Jay, please respond to the question. If you <laughs> so, no. if, if, uh, I, what I will say right. is that in the, in the United States, okay. it is the, the law that mm -hmm. journalists are protected. Okay. It's, it's the law. It's in the Constitution. It's, so, you do know, you, so, so, so just to buttress, just to buttress that, do you have situations where uh, journalists are victimized for doing their jobs? Um, very rarely. Um, mm -hmm. And that was how I was going to answer the question. Excellent. I, okay. I think the best way to answer the question is what David is currently dealing with. Um, and you've had David on your show. Um, he's a great reporter in Nigeria. And now, you know, look what has happened to him for trying to actually do his job um that doesn't really happen here in the united states we have a lot of protection of uh, uh, by the law 
uh, journalists are not attacked over here. We're allowed to do our job and bring out the truth. Now, you know, let's be honest, though, that has been coming under attack here in the United States in the last few years as well, especially during the Trump administration, hmm. because he created the whole fake news hmm. um, oh, yes. tagline. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, so ta- that tagline it, was huge during Donald Trump. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think you um, journalists didn't really like him was- so much, so you didn't do a lot of good to him, so <laughs> he had to... <laughs> you guys were after him. I mean, he had to do something to protect him. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So I'll let, let me take a few more calls. And, and then, sure. because we have less than 10 minutes to wrap up this conversation. Hello, good evening to you. Uh, hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Yes, very well. Go ahead. What's your name, sir? Yes, I'm Mr. James from the Gambia. Mr. James from the Gambia. Go ahead. Good, thank you. Um, I'm sorry I signed in late, but I understand the social security number of that Bola Etinibu, of that Bola Etinibu is a female. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Thank you. I can hear you, but it would have been better if you turned off the volume of your room listening device because you can hear that whole back and it's really not friendly. Okay, okay. I'll call back. All right, thank you so much. I take a few messages here. This says, um, "Yes, she should be investigated. I strong investigated. I strongly believe that um, the school should. Um, I strongly believe that the school would come out sometime. Imagine the yearbook he graduated is missing, but others before and after are intact. There must be something vicious out there. I have been seeing it. Uh, the man didn't attend the uni. Racketeering must have uh, taken place somewhere." Uh, can we pretend like people don't buy certificates in Nigeria? It should not be different uh, in some places in the world. Just uh, uh, as your guest uh, said, as your guest said, you mean, if he graduated from the school, why is the school not having his pictures everywhere to show how proud they are of him? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question, but I'll throw it back to you, Mr. J. And it says, uh, since I was born and now I am at 60 years, 60 years old, I have not seen a scandal as weighty as this. Certificate forgery hovering around the neck of a country's president, such as um, happening to Nigerian president. I perceive tsunami uh, looming. Uh, you said a lot. And he said, only God knows when and how the dust will settle, but definitely not anytime soon. Little wonder the president warned that the disclosure would cost him severe irreparable damage well you said a lot i appreciate you good evening precious what your guest was saying could be the reason why the school is not asking where he got the certificate from or welcome precious you're doing well thank you and then he says um all right um godfrey from surrealary says is there any need for this unending analysis i had thought those moves by tinubu's lawyers to block the CSU from releasing the academic records of Tinubu and the admittance that uh, it would amount to irreparable damage is, if the records were made of the public, is enough for us to understand, you know, what is going on already. Perhaps that's not still enough for us to understand what's going on. But let's just talk to a few more persons uh, so that we can let you go. Hello, good evening to you. Hi, good afternoon, uh, uh, Pressure. This is Sebastian. Mr. Stab, you're welcome. Good welcome. afternoon to my... Yeah, to your special guest. Yes. I uh, really appreciate your insight to, to this um, matter. Um, what this gentleman has been saying, for the, uh, about a month ago, uh, the, I know uh, social media has been getting some negative uh, press because of what they've been, what they've been saying. But this, this statement that this man, uh, young man is uh, saying this afternoon has been out there. The rot that is in Chicago State University is, 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 is well known. Um, this morning, I was asking uh, Kami Jure, if this uh, president really graduated from the university and they said there's a, there's a certificate that, that was issued in that name, why didn't he up to now go and get it? Just fill out the form, because my, my fear or his fear is that if he fill out the form for, the, for a replacement, uh, the information that he's probably going to give is not going to tally because, like the gentleman said, over here in the United States, social security number is what is used to identify you. If he has a social security number and doesn't tally with the one that the school has, then everything is going to be, is going to be uh, uh, open. 
which is already what I believe he is facing. Thank you. This is uh, my my, uh, my observation. Thank you. All right. Thank you Sebastian. so much. Um, all right. Mr. J, would you react to that? Sebastian is calling from California, by the way. So would you like to react to what he said about the social security number and the possible reasons why the president may not have applied for his certificate? Because I'm still wondering if the school indeed did admit that this person went to our school and graduated from our school. And then, you know, say that he's not, we didn't issue the certificate he gave to INEC. And then in another breath, he also did say that we don't keep copies of students' diploma. But you've not even issued him the, the first diploma in the first place. So that means where is the diploma that they prepared and kept for a student who ought to have graduated from your school? There must be something missing, right? Or am I, is yeah. my head just running, you know, south? No, it's not running south. We're all asking the same questions and, right. and we're not getting clear answers okay. from the university who can clear all of this up. The university has to really step out and say what their policies are, what their procedures are, how this situation here went down. And what I'm saying is that this president of Chicago State, again, we haven't seen her. We haven't heard from her. She hasn't released a statement from public relations. Nobody has said anything. And I think until the pressure is continuously put on her to come out, President Scott, and say what happened and say, you know what? This is never going to happen again because I'm going to take control of this and make sure all of our protocols are in place. The fact that she has not done that is what is giving me a lot of concern and should give every Chicago State graduate a lot of concern as well. All right. And then another person did ask a question. If we say that a social security number that a president did um, submit at entrance into the school belongs to a female, correct, right? Yes. Yes. And that where has this person been? Since we're all claiming that that's, that's, that's what the person is saying. That where has the owner of the social security number been? That is a very good question. That is, um, and I think, first of all, we have to, we don't even know if that person exists. We don't know if that person is deceased. Hmm. Um, we it's, it's we don't know, and I think that is the million dollar question. I say this: uh, there have been some online sleuths who said they have traced the number to a person, a female in the state of Louisiana here in the United States. Um, I cannot confirm that, um, but that that is some online chatter about that. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to confirm is I don't like the way they went about doing it. And they put this person's picture all out over the Internet. They put their family members out all mm. over the Internet. Mm. And none of that is confirmed. It's very sloppy oh, and wow. unprofessional work to do that. Mm. You have to confirm these things before you do that. But uh, we, we can definitely confirm that the Social Security number is different. We know it was issued to someone uh, in Virginia, the state of Virginia. Okay. Uh, and the way we know that certain numbers, the way they line up on your social security number, tell you if it was a, a female or a male and what state it was issued to. And to our knowledge, President Bola was never in Virginia. Okay. So, that is why so, so from what you investigated or researched sure. from the social, from the social security number released, you know, from the deposition, the deposition documents, it is that it, sure. that number does belong to a female. That's what you could decipher. Yes. Good. And we can't tell the condition of the female that it does belong to. But why would you think a school would actually admit a social security number that belongs to a school and admit a male? Why do you think a school would do that? So the thing I, Precious, the thing I thought that was so confusing was when they released the documents to the public, mm -hmm. that they didn't redact the social security number. I'm wondering why didn't they do, why do you think they didn't redact <laughs> anyway? Because it would have, you know, they were redacting names. You understand for yeah. privacy reasons. Why didn't they do that? Right. I, I don't know. That again, and this is what I'm talking about with Chicago State. They Perhaps they forgot or that. something. <laughs> I, I, that's a theory. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I thought it was very interesting that they shared that information with the public, but other things they decided to redact. But I don't know. You have to ask Chicago State that question. You are in Chicago, so you have to ask Chicago State. Speaking about <laughs> Chicago State, um, before we wrap up, I'd like to know um, what what's the position of the government of Chicago State is concerning all of this drama that is uh, unfolding. But I'll, I'll take a few calls and then I'll get your response to that. Hello, good evening to you. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that yeah. question. Hello, good evening. 
Good evening. Yes, this please. Nedu calling from Switzerland. Nedu, you're welcome. From um, I thank this young man, this uh, old man, this journalist you invited here, because you see what is going on in Nigeria today. I'm so surprised that the Nigeria elites, most whom, how do I say it, most educated ones are defending fraud, open fraud. That in, in the United States, this university says that we cannot authentically confirm that this, uh, uh, what he submitted to INEC is not from us. This is what we have. You know, I went back a few days ago. I went back to the University of uh, Zurich here. I checked since 1950 till date. You can see all the school archives till date. So what is happening to Chicago University, State University? Because these people have been in, in, uh, in trouble in the news days after days since the emerging of Bola Ahmed Tunubu since last year people have been saying a lot of this about this university and these guys have this guy have exposed it more please i want to ask can't uh, this the governor of that state take action against these people that is just my question thank you so much so um Jay, just before we wrap up, because we have about, you know, less than four minutes to wrap up. He yeah. is asking that can't the governor of um, Chicago or Illinois, you know, yeah. um, take charge of what is happening? And the same question I did ask, I was trying to ask that he didn't get me right, uh, correctly. I wanted to know what the position of the government of Chicago is in what is happening in their school, because this will affect the image of not just the school, but the state too, because the name of the state is everywhere. Doesn't it matter? Of course it does. And, and right. again, I, I'm very happy that your, your very astute listeners are asking that question. The governor, J.B. Pritzker, can step in at any moment, at any moment he wants to, and say, hey, what the heck is going on at this university? I need some answers. He appoints the members who are on the board of trustees. Oh, including the president. The, no, the president okay. is selected by the board of trustees. All right. But well, he appoints governor, the members of the board of trustees. There you Absolutely. go. Okay. So he could easily step in here and say, I need some answers. Now, here's the other reason why we may see some movement. Governor J.B. Prisker has been rumored to wanting to run for president of the United States. Oh, next year? So he... So, he won't be able to do it this time because Biden has decided he's going to run for re-election. For re-election. They're both Democrats. Democrats. But in 2028, Pritzker could definitely be looking to run for president. He can't afford this type of scandal uh, happen under his watch. So he's governor. rather feigning ignorance, right? Um, what was that? Is he I'm rather feigning ignorance? ignorance? Forgive me. Is he feigning ignorance? Um, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I think right now he I think right now there just hasn't been enough pressure put on this governor to step in. And again, that's why I say the more media pressure, the more citizens are starting to ask questions about this, the more likely you're gonna start seeing a response from some of our higher end politicians like the governor of Illinois. All right. Thank you so much, Jay. You have been very helpful. Thank you for giving us an insight in what has played out. And I'm looking for, I do hope that if I invite you sometime again, you'll be able to oblige me. I sure Thank will. you. Thank you Thank for you. giving me more than one hour of your time. It's so much <laughs> more than we bargained for, by the way. I appreciate you. And to think that this wasn't pre-planned anyway, I really do appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank Take you. Care. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye. You too.
right, Lagos, I'll go straight on to read a few of your messages and then take a few of your calls and then I go straight to my step down conversation because I am tired of problem, right? So phone lines are now still officially open, 0700 903 903 903. Let's take your thoughts, your reactions on what you have heard so far. Don't ask me questions. I'm not in Chicago and I'm not uh, coding. I wouldn't know what is playing out there. So Jay Coding Pama is uh, um, an award-winning journalist in the United States of America. Uh, he is presently in Chicago, Illinois, and he used to be an alumni of Chicago State University. By the way, he did say that he was in charge of the school's uh, newspaper, Temple, at the time he was in school in the nineties. So he understands very much a lot that plays out in the school. Uh, just to put a perspective to why we invited him uh, to for this interview. He was the journalist who initially did publish and say something about, you know, the, the discrepancies he noticed in the INEX certificate and, uh, you know, the certificate that he knows being a student of the school, right? So we had to call him for some questions. All right. So um, let's take your calls now very quickly. Hello. Good evening. Can you help me? When you call, please turn up the volume of your radio set. I actually do not have that time today. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, please. Good evening. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, this is Collins coming from UK. Collins, you're welcome. Go ahead. Let's hear you. Thank you. All right. Um, I think I would start by saying that I'm really happy, you know, watching this program so far. Thank you. And um, I'll be looking forward to see when the government steps in, because it's a very big scandal. The the government really needs to come in to play a part if truly what um jay coiden oh that's his name yeah that's J. J. Coiden, about, coiden uh, Palmer. yeah about the um governor in the future coming into um presidency or you know going for the office of the presidency then i think if this is time to clear the mess that is going on in his state mm. because the opposition will still use it against him during your time as a governor in chicago what did you do when this came up nothing so we don't think that you are capable to run the affairs of the entire nation if you were unable to handle this very thing mm. so you think that this is an opportunity for him to actually you know clean up things around him Yes, clean mm. up this mess and put himself in the front of the national um, newspaper or whatever they right. might call it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. you. Thank you. All right. Um, I have a lot of messages and calls to respond to and we have very limited time. Uh, time so I need to uh, run along very quickly. Hello. Good evening to you. Oh, good evening. How are you yes. doing? Very well. Thank you. Welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Bjorn. I'm calling from Germany. Your name is what? I'm from Wichu. Be are you're welcome. Go ahead, let's hear you. Yeah, I think we should give it to Barry Sagan. That man is a prophet. Was it not yesterday that I was saying that even the school has problems, that they have a lot of dark sides, that involve a lot of a lot of dirty things. The same thing your guest said. A lot of questions. In fact, they are speaking from both sides of their mouth. They will go forward, they will come back forward. They should well, say something. The school too has problems. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So my message box is full. Let me see if I can pay attention to a few messages. This is precious. What of asking Mobile which, who employed uh, the president uh, uh, to produce a certificate that he used to gain employment. And then this says, precious, your guest can't justify what he's saying on radio because he doesn't have the fact for all allegations he laid against the Chicago State University. All he is saying is just to justify their failed attempts to rubbish mr president and they failed woefully he's not even a nigerian oga calm down he's not gonna gain anything right okay and then he says antinobu um, he said and they failed woefully antinobu uh come clean with the testimony of csu registrar on oath in court and he said tinubu is male and he graduated from the school uh case closed uh, Ulu from badagri I appreciate you thank you so much but the same thing we're saying he graduated from the school so uh why did didn't the school issue the certificate and why can't the school authenticate the certificate that is ought to have been issued by either them or their third vendor? I don't know. But uh, let me take a few more messages. Uh, AY from Moshe says, Precious, God bless you and bless you and bless you more and bless you more <laughs> for the wonderful job that you did tonight. Thank you so much. I bless. Hello. Good evening to you. Good evening, Madam Precious. Hello, How AY. I'm very well. I'm super. How about you? 
I'm doing very well. Awesome. Where did AOI come from, right? Oh, yeah. AOI, let's do it sharp, sharp. We don't have plenty of time today. Go ahead. Sharp, sharp. Sharp, okay. sharp. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I, when I, yesterday, um, I just want to add one word what I said yesterday. Um, there's a deliberate attempt by the media. No, 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 not the, I shouldn't generalize. Um, a segment of the media that have decided to bring this narrative. I don't know where you appeared from, of this narrative of third party third party um what vendors. do you call it third party vendors it's huh? been a thing yeah third party vendors that's what yeah. they've been calling them yes this nonsense third party vendors i want oh, to but, kill but don't that call, don't right call it nonsense right now. because the person who right. graduated from the school said is a thing but but, yes. it, but it doesn't he happen said, without the consent of the school so he exactly. admits to it. any third party that produces a document for Chicago State University is producing fraud. I can tell you that right now because they asked the registrar of the university the process as which a student attains a, a, a replacement certificate. And I will go back to the deposition because we, we need to be factual here. Mm. They asked them, question. So my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that all diplomas are signed by the current president and board chair. The registrar said correct. Mm -hmm. And so if I graduated in 1979 and fill out this form for replacement diploma, and the replacement diploma will be signed by the current president and chair and board chair, he said, he said yes. And anyone else that would expect a copy of the diploma he said and sorry sorry he said anyone else that you would expect to see on the diploma as a signature he said no these are the only signatures that are going to be on the diploma and he said question and if it is a third party requesting mm -hmm. a diploma not issuing if it is a third party requesting that a means, diploma that means, of a csu graduate that means do I, you always that, that means for instance um a legal team is requesting um, a diploma of a CSU graduate, but not the person who actually you, graduated from the school, or, or me you, requesting, or anybody, or Absolutely. any Tom, Dick, and Harry Absolutely. requesting, not issuing. Mm. So anybody issuing a diploma in the name of CSU as a third party is committing fraud. All right, I appreciate you. Um, let me run along now because I have too many messages to, to pay attention so to. So please, please, let people know. The media need to know this. Kill the narrative of there's nothing like third party here. There's a process as which you call, you collect a, 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 a replacement diploma. I you do apply. agree. I, I, do, I do somebody agree. Somebody applied and never picked it up. I do agree. AY, also do remember that, you know, a student of the school has just also stated categorically that the third party thing is actually a thing however that doesn't happen without the consent of the school and the school yes, couldn't have denied what I'm trying to say. Uh, the school couldn't, the couldn't have denied of it, the school. exactly so the school couldn't have denied a paper that comes from its own third party so i understand what you're exactly. saying exactly that is how they try to they try to so doubt please media yeah. Anybody right. because the school the school would have authenticated yes the school the school would have authenticated about oh yeah you don't do oh yeah come and be going a y bye 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 it's okay it is fraud <sighs> oh dear all right this is according to our guest the social security number bola Chinubu used belongs to a female and the female individual has been traced to louisiana virginia he said and the social security number was issued to the female uh in the state of virginia yes and bola Chinubu did what again uh, has never stayed in Virginia. Wonders shall never end. Oh, Victor from Ijago, you sent in that. All right, I appreciate you. And then this says, uh, please, uh, um, uh, your guest aware of the admission letter? Is your guest aware of the... Oh, dear, I hope your messages will let me read now. He said, is your aware, guest uh, aware of the admission letter uh, that have been... Uh, letter set to have been issued to Bola Chinubu? The information on in it contradicts the, uh, the affirm a female how readily of students reach out to sending their request to third party vendors Semisola from Isola. well i'm sorry he's no longer here so we can ask that question precious what uh, was it true that csc temporarily took down their ex account in the case of course they, they did take down their ex account that's that's 
not negotiable. What um what is the social security number in Ketchumaji from Ajawa State? Look it up in the deposition documents. You see that. Precious, thanks so much for the big uh, ops to journalist uh, Jay. Thanks to VOP. A great job. Unlike uh, some, uh, thank you. You're doing a great job, Precious. Thank you. I love you. I love you too, Emperor. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. And then he says, I am not for any party. I am for Nigeria. I just hate sentiment. And I still believe if Tinubu never attended CAC, he would have gone uh, for some courses to obtain certificate. That's uh, not mandatory to have higher degree this man is smart he would have put uh, his house in order and i still believe he did attend and graduated from csu uh, because the school confirmed that nobody is saying otherwise now do you guys even read to understand eh try and read to understand nobody is saying other otherwise so the people are saying that it looks like the school also knows something that we do not know because if you're saying that this person graduated from your school and you affirm that he's the one that you admitted why did you not issue him results and why are you denying the result that he has that is not from you that you don't know anything about it can you answer that question all right let me go back to my messages emma from lego says if there is certificate forgery and nothing happens in this case then Ms. Mesoma should not be blamed for forging her jam results that's what she said emma and then he says, firstly, the United States government should be indebted to David Hunday because the school has had a lot of bad reputation unknown to them. Even so, giving bad name to the USA in terms of corruption, uh, the world is fighting hard to eradicate. Secondly, this is not a simple case the way we look at it in Nigeria. A lot of it uh, is at a lot, a lot of things at stake in this matter. What moral right? Uh, he will have as the president of Nigeria, as the president of ECOWAS, a world leader with such controversy surrounding him. If, if he rules otherwise, or the court rules otherwise, he's saying, remember, the coup leader in Congo stated it's because, started it because they know that they won't get justice in their judiciary. So, we must be very careful in handling this high-profile matter in the eyes of Nigeria, West Africans, Africans at large, and of course, um, the whole world because there is vested interest now by everyone. That's what you say. I appreciate you. Thank you for your message. Uh, all right. And then he says, um, okay, I skip. Okay. I appreciate you. I'm going back to my phone lines very quickly. And then I quick, I take a quick breather and then I move straight to my, um, WhatsApp, um, to, to my step down segment. Hello. Good evening to you. Hello, good evening. My name is Jonathan. I'm calling from London. Mr. Jonathan, you're welcome. Okay, let me quickly jump on it and get out. <laughs> so, so yeah. I said uh, t -t thank you for your for your for your journalist for your guest uh, from uh, from US. All right. So he has put he has put a lot of uh, a lot of light on it, and uh, mm -hmm. I want to say that we have never even finished this uh, certificate. IRS has released another six six cases again hey, I, saw that. I saw that i saw that today i saw that but i didn't you want to it. because i'm yet to confirm it so that one is a matter of a okay. different matter entirely let's let, let us breathe please okay okay mm -hmm. okay and the thank for the, let's appreciate me so much for this uh precedence so because uh, see, we are linking it now so thank you very much all right thank you i appreciate you thank you all right lagos phone lines are still open 0700 903 903 903 0700 903 remains the number to call uh, let's see if we can take a few of your messages before uh we run there are too many responses on youtube i'm sorry if i cannot take your responses or your reactions from youtube please forgive me because they're very much hello good evening to you oh yeah i missed that hello good evening okay so perhaps i just go back to my messages that's that looks like it feels like a safe safer place to be uh, this is good evening i do feel for this uh for the president on this issue of certificate and um uh, but the question is why isn't he coming out to hold a press conference and to tell us exactly what may have transpired andrew from Ilori sent in that message all right hello good evening to you hello? hello yes good evening welcome mr johnson Mr. Johnson, you're welcome. Go ahead. What's your name, sir? Okay, yeah, Mr. Johnson. Why are you calling from Mr. Johnson? At all. From where? Can, help me turn uh, off the volume of your radio. I can hear a whole back, and it's not very friendly. Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hey, wait. What happened now? What did I do? Hello. Good evening to you. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Welcome uh, back. Thank you. I'm James calling back. I call it from the Gambia. James, you're welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Um, 
When the FBI report starts coming up, yes, I can do that. I've done that already. Uh, please, when the FBI reports are coming out, you've got more work to do. Thank you for the good work. And uh, please, kindly watch your back because you are a journalist. You know what I mean. Kindly oh, wow. watch your back at all times. Oh, really? Thank you. Someone is after my life? Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. How we live in Nigeria? All right. Uh, Miss Omar did not have the results she paraded. So, oh, goodness. So, uh, com comparing it shows how low Nigerians think. That's what you said. I appreciate you. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. Hello. Good evening to you. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Good evening. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name, Sam? Where are you calling from? My name is Mr. Andy. I'm calling from the Sherry. Mr. Andrew, go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening. You see, you know, uh, the issue of this certificate that is happening, I don't even know what we are concerned about. Like, this young man, Atiku, uh, everybody knows as someone as that man is, who dig over this issue, dig over this issue. It does not bring out anything. The hardship in this country, they should look into the, the 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 level the situation of economy compared to when all of us were in the system you know how i don't understand so what do you mean by all of us were in the system were we all part of governance sometime you were now were you not a uh, part of the system when uh, president obama was in the system i was not part of the system i was never in government okay uh -huh. So how, how can you compare those government now to this time? Ah, things were cheaper then now. The claims we are seeing now, is see, the president has around this country for good eight years mm. and went away with a very terrible hardship in this country. Which of the presidents are you talking about now? That is President uh, Muhammad Obari, former president of that event. Mm. You see, there is nobody that will come out to confuse me this time that Tinubu is a cause of the problem of Nigeria. Let's forget about the uh, issue of a uh, certificate or whatever. Yeah, but we're not even I talking about we... issue of Nigeria now. Now we're talking about nothing. You're derailing our conversation. You just chose to derail our conversation. Is that fair? You I deliberately want... wanted you to talk so that it doesn't look like I denied you, you yeah. know, the time to speak. But you're derailing us. You're taking us off our conversation. Uh, interesting. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, this message here says, Good evening, Precious. Nobody is after your life for doing a good job. Leo from Lagos. <laughs> All right. And uh, the president has sincerely uh, mismanaged his uh, career. Uh, I look at it as very, very mismanagement of his uh, But you can't say that category. You can't say that categorically now. How can yeah, you show evidence yeah, of mismanagement? Uh, is mismanagement in the sense that this is not supposed to get to this level. You understand what I'm saying? It's not supposed to get to this level. Whatever it is, it will have tried to quench the fire, whether it's wrong or it's right. You know, I, I don't know uh, of a Tunubu that we know. It's supposed to quench the fire. But now this has gone out of the border of this nation, and many people are getting nation. And many people are getting uh, mindful of it to know what is actually going on. Because if actually you have a certificate, why should you be afraid or ashamed to to present it? I don't see any reason why uh, our president should allow this to go far like this. Right. I appreciate you know, that. Mm -hmm. is, that is what I meant. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. somebody told you to watch your back. Better watch your phone very well. And let God watch your back for you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello, good evening to you. Hello, good evening. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Great. What's your name, please? Where are you calling from? I'm actually calling from the state, um, United States of America. What's your name, please? Uh, my, name is my name is Tosin. Tosin, Tosin how are you doing welcome. today? I'm great. I'm super. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, thank you guys for all that you've been doing um, for the country. Um, thank you for um, the news and everything. But 
I mean, just calling in, I saw um, Corin yes. actually was on the show, but I yes, mean, I was. didn't get to meet him. Um, I was going to probably play back the, the old thing later on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, Corin, I mean, Corin wrote a very wonderful um, story about this old thing. And I think Corin would have provided the true and correct story for the Nigerians. Because Corin was a student of Chicago State University. Absolutely. Corin knew when most of the people came to power. Corin was on ground. Now, it's not like maybe some of our news, <laughs> news media in Nigeria trying to spin a narrative, even though we know the truth. Mm. One thing we need, one thing we need to realize is that the price of Gary, the same amount that you will buy it, is the same amount that maybe the woman that does not have the privilege to be in a in a radio program or a TV program will buy it. Whether we believe it or not, whether you work in the news media or you work in the banking industry or you work in the oil and gas industry, this shaggy that this guy are trying to renew go touch everybody everybody go collect mm -mm, mm -mm, so mm -mm, now mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. we now please please mind your language need, sir okay okay mm. so we now need to be able to tell ourselves the truth whatever they may be saying about this old saga or the forgery thing the fact remains the fact that the certificate that he presented to INEC was a forged certificate and that is what Nigerians need to know. And you is saying they're, they're saying that the third party is the certificate. There is no way a student of a school can go meet a third party to issue them a certificate. It's not done. Before you can get your certificate, you have to go through the school. You don't even know who the, who the third party is. Now, let me cite a scenario for you here. I have a master's program I did in, in, in a school over here. My diploma was sent to me in May. And that diploma got bent, you know, like how they bend paper. So on the envelope, they said, do not bend. But the postal service, for some reason, bent the diploma. Mm. And so I saw that diploma and then called my school. Oh, this is a situation because, I mean, before it came, it was delayed. And I called them, this is the situation. And they told me, we can issue you a new diploma. The only thing you have to do is to pay this X amount of dollars. Why didn't I call the third party that I don't know? So no third party can issue you a certificate or a diploma. Uh, but 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 this. but people from the school, Cole didn't actually did admit that is a thing that it happens in the school. He did admit that well, is a thing. I, mean, I, I don't know where Chicago State University is, is doing theirs, but he said not he just for Chicago care. State University, but for other schools too. So I mean, I'm, I'm a journalist. I'm asking questions for clarity. And I did ask those questions. And the essence of all of this is for us to be educated, really. And exactly. we've, we've been educated. And, yeah, and apart from being educated, also we have the true story. And why are we fighting for the truth, to get the true story? It's just on the fact that our country cannot be like this. We are like a laughing stock in the face of the world. People now are being scrutinized. Regardless of whether you have a three passport or you have four passport, regardless. You are scrutinized in the face of the world. Just some days ago, now we had a story of nurses being asked to retake exam in the UK or even the United States of America. Why? Because it's a Nigerian thing, like the registrar said. Ouch! It's, I it's forgot CSC. to even ask that part of the question. I wanted to say, you know, at the time he threw all the accusation about CSU, uh, I wanted to say that so it's not just a Nigerian thing anyway. So that means CSU is also part of okay. that. But it's okay. okay. Go now, ahead. Okay. Okay, we all, we all now agree that it's not in Nigeria. So it's not a Nigerian, Nigerian thing. thing. Yes. Why then are we? Why then are people trying to spin a narrative? <laughs> so my sister, the only thing was saying here is the fact that this man called Bola Ahmed Tinumbu forged. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, come and be going. Thank Ahmed. you, thank you. I, mean, I will carry my load and. Oh yeah, pack your load and be going. I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> I take a few messages and then I go to my step down conversation. Dear Precious, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Akukuma no do anybody anything, so no weapon shall prosper. Uh, watch your back, you're, uh, you're a journalist. It's so unnecessary from the color. Precious, please don't mind that. Mm. All right, I appreciate you. Uh, good evening, Precious. Uh, please, why should we, after having seen the light and we keep searching for the light again, please, uh, if uh, 
what uh, which certificate from Nigeria was Sinibu got enrollment CSU uh, there was a mix up what you said a lot I appreciate you thank you very much and Odom says precious you are fully protected you count on me and any weapon formed against you will not press I appreciate you you did my backyard Abby <laughs> people should stop raising false and irresponsible alarm telling you to watch your back well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm, not, I'm not about to even leak to that I appreciate you not. all right so Lagos will be taking a breather because I have a step down conversation after the break I'll let you in on my step down conversation and my step down guests stay with us this is 92.3 voice of the people if i may still the evening rush my name is precious i'll be right back tune in pizza lovers because something big is happening in ajao estate lagos are you ready for a slice of heaven Get ready to indulge your taste buds like never before. That's right, folks. Romeo Pizza is opening a sizzling new outlet at 22 Latif Salami Street, Ajao Estate, right next to the famous Globa Supermarket. Mark your calendars today for the grand opening this Friday on October the 6th. It's going to be a pizza party like no other. Picture this. Just picture this. Mouth-watering cheesy slices freshly baked in our ovens just waiting for you to take a bite and that's not all we've got special deals giveaways and surprises lined up to make your visit unforgettable join us at romeo pizza on october 6th at 22 latif salami street ajao estate for the pizza event of the year don't miss out on the flavor explosion romeo pizza the secret is in the sauce stay tuned for more updates and we'll see you there are you looking for the perfect getaway? Look, no. In an open canal, what to go and end up state? The government and which are EG, EG, the Liria, no forty billion dollars. Where will it talk on a banana libu? Bukanke, Ojiriva Industrial Park is a lot to name a Ojiriva Industrial Park. Bukuru Purichi, government is set in which are quality, a conobana libu. Obun de Sellers Group, Narua here, Bukanke Gabu, or keep an amber freak a baburu buru. Obunu Boba, Bukanke din so, Nananda Ziki University, Oka, Kaga Roya, Oga Boya in a gun or no to ebe, Matakwa, Nadia Bulo Dubelu, Akanibia International Airport in Ubu, Bukanke Game, Kangwa Yane, Sinambo Fesi. Na abata ma na apokwa. Ndi je gona apado la hi agunyiri. African Development Bank, International Finance Corporation, American Asian Bank, Bank of Industry, Infrastructure Development Bank, Central Bank, Taj Bank, Sukuk Fund, na kwa Development Bank of Nigeria. Ake mati hendi ya zonu uju, gana ojiriveric.com.ng. Mabuka otran lo sike na 0813-180-1541. Jude, 0903-194-9623. Adibu, 070-471-30361. Elder Patrick, 0816-817-0210 Abu Hanandi Sellers Group Naruko Oji River Industrial Park Nka Abu Nkanye Listen to hot critical analysis and top trending topics of the day Join Precious Monday to Friday 7 to 9 p.m. On The Evening Rush <laughs> Nigeria, you are welcome back. It is still 90.3 voice of the people of them. Still the evening rush, right? Where would it go, precious? So let me leave the problem of Nigeria to Nigeria and let me face other problems. So this is my step down conversation. And I have with me in the house um, a brother and a friend. And we basically want to talk about the, I, I like to say the only functional industry in Nigeria. The, the only functional industry in Nigeria <laughs> or the most functional. Let me not just, you know, let me not make others feel bad. So I want to talk about the most functional industry in Nigeria and as the music industry in Nigeria. And I have with me Koyonina. Versace. Uh, it's not okay, Versace. Yes. Versace Jiggy. Versace with the double S. Okay, Versace with the double S. Hey. All right, you're welcome to the city. I appreciate you being here with me. Thank you for having me okay awesome all right so um versace let's talk about your music first of all what's the interest um it's it's something i've done since i've been a kid because um you've I, been a kid how since i've been a since i've been little like years ago years back as a kid because i've been in the choir since i've been a kid oh so, so you're one of those church been, church boys yes. that's 
that he finally backslided and you, you took why, your life back from Christ. Why are you calling it backslide? No, 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 no. I'm that's just still, saying. I'm still. just. You know, you know, a lot of Nigerian artists, them, a lot of them, you know, not a lot of Nigerian, even foreign artists, they have them beyond. Oh, somehow they started from choir and then they decided to not, you know, be with Christ again and yeah, I think went I the still, other way. I still work with God. You're still with Christ. The devil keeps following me. I used to. But I'm working with God. <laughs> so you didn't, have, you didn't at any point borrow your life back from Christ. So let's talk about your love oh, for yeah. music, really. So, uh, what what is it with with music? Um, I've always loved music. I've always mm-hmm. loved. Um, I've always loved expressing myself. Music. Okay, so when you said you started with choir and all of that, I would have thought that you probably do gospel. Do you do? Yes, I do. You uh, do for the first music. I oh, you gospel. did yeah. before you decided to undo. I do. I still sing gospel music, but not not um, not commercially. Oh, not com- oh, you no, sing like, gospel music sing in the bathroom. Oh, wait, you sing gospel music in the bathroom. I, no, I sing it then you sing like commercial one for the world. <laughs> hey. I sing, it, I sing it more like between me and my God to praise my God. Eh, uh, but the one you want to use and make money, you sing it for the world. I don't think I should be using God to make okay, money. Okay, let, let's 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 let, let's just talk about if I was sing gospel, then it's gonna be free. Alright. So let's talk about your <laughs> let's talk about your choice of music, really. What kind of music do you do? Okay, so I do Afrobeats now. I'm back to Afrobeat. Mm. I started actually. Mm. I started actually with um, hip hop because mm. I was in a scene that I worked for. I worked for an entertainment company, mm. and I worked for a club whereby the tagline is "We own hip hop." Mm-hmm. So, due to that fact, I, I, um, <clears throat> I stayed on that scene. I tried to get into that scene. You know, I did some hip hop songs, mm. but. I just figured it wasn't working out. Because me, I just looking at you, I just feel like I see a lot of hip-hop all over you. Right? Uh, yes, I do. Mm. <laughs> because I got involved in that vibe for a while. But then, after some time, a friend advised me, actually, it was a DJ, and he said, I've heard you do what you do, because I'm a hype man. I, I MC at the clubs. So. Okay. And I'm like, he was like... You do that in Nigeria? No, I do that in Thailand. I'm busy. In Thailand? Oh, you're in Thailand? Yes. Oh, wow, that's great. The awesome. Company I work for is in Thailand. The okay. Company I work for is in Thailand. Okay. And you're just a hype man. Sugar Club, yes. That's what you do. Yeah, I'm basically the thing. So, so that means that thing is a thing. Like, it's a big career on it. So, you know, that thing is like play play. Oh. Indeed. You know, it's like play play. Like, you know, person they sing, person they hear, us, hey, do. Yeah, but yeah, the same, you know, now hyping is now a it's thing. A job, it's so, a hyping is an entire industry on its own now. It is. Oh, but wow. Not just hyping, I, do, I host events for them. It's a okay. full entertainment company, so they have different. I, I do basically host and hyping. Okay. Um, so yeah, then I decided to finally move back into Afrobeat because I figured that is my thing. Mm-hmm. Like no matter how much we try to do the hip hop thing, it's never gonna be ours because when they do it, it's always gonna be better because that is their thing. Mm. So I decided, you know what? Because at first when I went there, Afrobeat wasn't big. Mm. It was difficult to hear Afrobeat music. So I wanted to even ask, how is Af- Afrobeat perceived in Thailand? Because I know that Nigerian music has traveled far and right right now. now. So yes, now? how is it perceived now? Yes. Okay, now. and now versus when you went there, really? I'd like to know. When I went there at first, trust me, you'll probably hear one song in the night. Oh, yeah, Shake oh, uh, okay. The songs back then, okay. You know, you just and they could dance that they're offbeat dance with the dance. No vex. True, true. No denial. No denial. Okay. It was rare. And mm. I think I and some other people that worked in that entertainment, we tried to push Afrobeat as much. We started hosting parties, like private parties, Afrobeat parties. Mm. And with time, you know, now the club I work for, we have a night that is just Afrobeat all night. And that club is tagged as We Own Hip Hop. So you can imagine how far mm. it has come for them to actually give us a night. So, yes, um, Afrobeat has gone way bigger than... I mean, in the night, you hear like 30% of Afrobeat at least. That's, that's huge a club, for a non-Nigerian a club, car, a non-African country. Called, that is called We Own Hip Hop, Sugar Club. So, wow. yes, that ha- is, it's gone big. They and could play them. 30% yes. Afrobeat. That's yes. big. I remember that's trying big. to get, give the DJ songs back then, and they'd be like, oh, no, this is not our style, blah, blah. But mm. now, they the were vibe. asking me... Yo, the you vibe got is... new, you got some new songs <laughs> oh wow awesome all right so that's good um so uh, i like to play your song but because i'm streaming live on youtube i wonder if i wouldn't be flagged if i'm playing your song on my youtube channel do you think i'll be flagged if i do that um, 
I may be. Do you have the right of all your songs? You have the right to all your songs on YouTube. And my YouTube channel doesn't have the right. So I don't know. Do you think maybe because I have you here? They'll probably get to ask me. So So you think I should go ahead and risk it? All right. So let's just say, give a tip of the iceberg of what your songs sound like. I don't want to go to Chuko yet because Chuko sounds like something you sang for a babe. I'm coming to you for that. Uh, But let me just, I swear, babe, I'll be, ah! I got you. Well, let's just get a tip of what, you know, um, what your song of music is like, basically. We'll be right back. Ah, uh, for singing or ah, uh, you try, you uh, eh? All right, so uh, who be Mona Lisa? She broke your heart <laughs> um, nah, she because did. I know that women always inspire you for so, <laughs> so did she break your heart? Why did you sing about her? I wasn't singing about a girl. It's is it now? Is Mona Lisa a man? Mona Lisa is just the name of a girl, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, so that means he's a, he's a woman, Lisa, but I wasn't literally singing about her. It just right. the beat came up at the studio one day and we were just playing around, and I just used okay. the name to play, and somehow it worked out. Okay, great. Yeah. So tell us about more of your songs. What inspires your music? Um, we have on this song, the, the latest song I just have is Choco. And I think that one is just admiring the woman beauty. Mm. More about the African mm. beauty. Like the mm. African girl. You've been far and wide. You've searched for all races. Have you searched among all races, but you still appreciate the African woman. <laughs> <laughs> because if I remember the kind of praises other countries used to give to our men, I'm not like, ah, uh-uh, ah, why do you our men still come back here? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> why do you guys still come back after all? There, there, there's no place like home. You know? Oh, so Nigerian women at home, and I hear them. Hey! <laughs> what? Why is it hard for you to affirm it now? I, I say mean, it with your full chest now. I, mean, I, I don't say it. Your liberty it's court. It's like eh? What's it called? What's it called? I don't know what you want to call your <laughs> now. You know, you know, Grito Kamda. That's too strong. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, how long have you been doing this professionally now? Um, it's been like eight years now. Yeah. Eight years like now. now. So as a I, I, I dropped down from making music for a while. I mm-hmm. dropped Mona Lisa, and after a while, it took like four or five years for me to get back. I think I just got focused more on the what I was doing. I was just so busy, and I left it for a while. Okay. But now I decided to come back. I was like, you know what? I have this sound in me, and I want to get it out. So who purchases you? What? How do you purchase? How who? Where do who you do your production? Yes. Well, this song Choco was produced by Clemzy on the beat. Okay. I don't know, you might know him. I think he's worked with Whiskey. Don't know. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I recorded there, but I had to send it over to him. Over okay. There. And so mastered. Production master. He mastered yeah, everything. So awesome. So what's what you looking at? Claims you on the beat. Uh uh-huh. yeah. Okay. So what 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 you looking at moving forward in your music career? Moving forward, I'm trying to work on an EP now. So I'm trying to push it and do better. I'm just trying to bring out all the sounds that I've kept in for a long time. Mm. So are you looking at featuring any major Nigerian artist in your music? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm hoping with time, I won't mention names now, but with time, I'm hoping to like have a couple of them. So how is this hype thing? How does it work over there? You know, we know of them, Dotsu and the rest of them here. Yeah. As, as I said earlier, I it's, it all started like a play. So it didn't look like it's is, a big industry as it's actually going. Yeah, the truth is, it's a lot different from the way Nigerian clubs and Nigerian hype men are. Mm. I wouldn't even lie. Like, I don't think, like I've gone to a club in Nigeria and seen the hype men work and I'm like, ah, this is how they do it. But then it's different because, you know, we we use our slangs, we use all of those things. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, mm-hmm. I'm not dealing with our people, so. So you have to, yeah, so there's a culture difference. Ob- yeah, obviously, mm. I'm more doing more hip hop. Okay. Afro B where I can use our And you have to be deliberately more hip so, too. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like the club portrays me more as the star of the club. So it's different. Wow. Like I have a, a whole stage. I have dancers oh. around me. So All right. it's a whole different thing. I'm just out there vibing. And making All right. Music. So how do we get across to you? Any social yes. social media handles? Official let's let us know. MC Some fine chicks may be looking at you now. Are you, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't ask you. Um, first of all, are you single or searching? 
single i'm not searching but yeah but you're single, single. Oh, okay. okay is your dm <laughs> open and slippery or open and free <laughs> talk now please dm me as much as you want uh dm yeah. as much as you want yeah. it's mine i sweet in you i oh, yeah, give us a social media account uh, social media official mc versace official mc versace how do you spell your versace okay var v-e-r okay double s all right official mc versace all right how how long are you in nigeria before you go back to thailand actually i'll be leaving in the next five days in the next five days yeah, and yeah, it's i came for like two weeks and three days okay so what's the prospect for Chuka? have you shot the video yet not yet so when, when are you doing that so next month okay okay right. i wanted to say would i feature in the video but it's okay i'm, I'm sure you're shooting in it's thailand in Tha- I, i'm sure i'm sure you're shooting in thailand on, but it's okay all right thank you so much I'll be, <laughs> I'll be ending this so which of your um which of your socials is official mc versace across all instagram. across all instagram. just yeah. instagram most of them um but facebook whatever it's all official like, mc versace yeah. in all of them yeah. thank you for stopping by by the way i just i, I just thought to have some friday vibes and friday you know, you know i don't tie up a while for nigeria so make i just step down with some songs yeah. all right because there you have Choco it season. all thank right you for me. thank Appreciate you thank you for stopping by all right because that's the size of my package this evening thank you to everyone who's made the show worth it i appreciate all of you thank you for joining the show for those that are doing radio messages i apologize see eh? my mouth said they pay me message plenty in fact my people could say messages like a break a sass we had ever read forgive me you know how we do this thing on monday i'll be with you again hopefully with mr darling Singh. he's my monday thursday tonic on the show and if you like to feature in my show eh whatever party you belong whatever where you belong please dm me my name is precious Inye. on instagram i'm at precious in your official twitter is precious underscore any right and youtube i'm at precious any tv on youtube if you haven't seen my youtube you should go check me out on youtube precious any tv by the way any means friend and i love to be your friend i'll see you on monday have yourself a choco weekend <laughs> i got that right there have yourself a choco weekend choco. goodbye <laughs>